Sandy turned the steering wheel of the little Kia to the left, narrowly missing a small pickup truck that began to pull away from a stop sign on the right. She shook her head to clear it. For some reason, she felt strange, like she couldn't concentrate. Even worse, her stomach was rumbling, as if she was going to be sick. Home. She desperately needs to get home where she will be safe. All she could think about was that she had to beat Jack to get home. She had to. Glancing at the clock on the dashboard, she saw that it was barely past five in the evening. Jack usually walked through the door within 20 minutes. She pressed the pedal even harder, the little motor responding as she flew past the next traffic light and turned yellow. Going into the final turn, the tires squealed in protest as she quickly turned right into their driveway, slamming on the brakes to stop before she rammed the garage door. Realizing that she had gone too far for Jack to drive his huge Dodge pickup into the garage, she put the car in reverse and pulled it out onto the street. And then I saw that I drove out right in front of old man Henry, their neighbor who was also driving down the street. He slammed on the brakes of the incredible bright red 1956 Ford he was driving. She saw the stunned expression on his face for a moment and then quickly backed up, moving the small car even further away. She was glad she didn't crash into him. Henry loved this old car, spending hours polishing it until it seemed wet, even when it was actually dry. Sorry, she exclaimed, waving her hand before running into the house. Henry shook his head, waved back, and then headed further down the street. She thought that she would come to him later, take the cookies she had baked and apologize. She knew he loved him, and Henry was such a sweet old man. Often, when he was mowing his lawn, he would go down to their house and mow their lawn. If a switch didn't work, he was always there to fix it for her. He treated her like the daughter he never had. Many times, Henry came to her, sat next to her on the porch, and just talked while drinking tea. She loved the long, funny stories he told about his years in the Navy. Henry was well into his seventies and full of stories. It was incredibly nice to think about it at a time like this. Wiping away her tears, she tried to pull herself together and went into the house. Sandy ran up the steps to their bedroom, threw her purse on the bed, and took off her outerwear. Oh my God, she thought, as she saw the obvious marks of what she had done on her plain white cotton underwear. She stuffed them into the bottom of a nearby trash can, then pulled out some folded newspapers and pressed them tightly against her clothes. In the shower, she only spent a couple of minutes lathering herself up and rinsing off the water, which was so hot it was scalding, and she sobbed again as she washed herself, seeing more evidence pour out of her. She was pulling on her blouse when she heard Jack's truck. It was impossible not to notice this huge diesel engine with a huge exhaust system. She walked downstairs into the kitchen and set the pans on the counter just as she heard the top garage door open. Hi, dear. Jack walked up the steps from the garage and into the kitchen. He walked over and hugged her from behind, as he always did, and then kissed her neck. Sandy froze for a moment. Is it clean enough? Would Jack smell it and recognize it? Would you like something special for dinner, Jack? She asked, trying to hide the sudden panic that spread through her body. Cook whatever you want, baby, he replied, heading into the living room to read the newspaper. Newspaper? The newspaper was in the yard. She always brought it into the house and put it on her husband's armrest. Where's the newspaper, baby? He asked. It should be outside. I probably forgot it. I'll go get her now, she responded. Relax, I'll find it. The damned boy must have thrown her into the bushes again, he grumbled, went out and returned a few seconds later. She was lying right there on the porch, he said, more to himself than to anyone. Dinner went well, but Sandy's mind was in turmoil. Jack, as always, ate a lot and complimented her often, although the meal consisted of canned corn and leftover meatloaf, which she dressed with fresh onions and a few sliced mushrooms, and a salad, which she quickly prepared and dressed with apple cider vinegar, which he liked. She felt a flash of pleasure as he used a piece of bread to scoop up the remainder of the simple butter sauce she'd made to drizzle over the meatloaf. It had a small pinch of Italian seasoning. 
one of her mother's secrets. Jack sat and ate, acting completely normal. How can he not know? It was as if she felt that he should know, but of course he couldn't. Jack. Sweet and wonderful Jack, he trusted her completely, she knew it. Now she has betrayed him. How was your massage today, honey? Still helping? Jack asked, with his mouth full. Great, she replied, feeling a shiver run through her at these simple words. Jack knew she had been getting weekly massages since her accident. She goes to it every week and it really helps her. Sandy quickly stood up and walked into the kitchen, having to hide the tear that rolled down her cheek. She wanted to just burst into tears and let it all out, but she was scared. She wanted so desperately to tell him, to confess, but Jack will leave her, and she will die if he does. Jack trusted her completely, and now, tears silently rolled down her cheeks. Sandy quickly took some cool water and rinsed her face. Maybe he will beat her? God, how she hoped that he would beat her and punish her. But he is a kind and gentle man, and she knew that he would not do this. She had never heard him even raise his voice, not once. Even when he was upset about something, he usually needed a few seconds to collect his thoughts before saying anything. A large man, weighing over 110 kilograms, Jack somehow attracted more attention when he was like that. His calm voice took on an intensity that no one could ignore. The rest of the time he had a permanent one-sided grin, as if he was always up to something. He often joked with her, making her laugh, which was part of what Sandy loved about her man. Finally, pulling herself together, she brought Jack tea. After dinner, he always liked tea. He always pulled the tea bag up and down by the string until the drink was cool enough to take a sip. Then he carefully squeezed the bag and put it on the saucer. You look a little tired, dear. Was it a busy day? He asked, smiling. She almost spilled the beans, but instead simply said that maybe she could use a nap. Later, as they were getting ready for bed, Jack hugged her from behind, his hands coming up to caress her rib cage just below her very full breasts. It was a sign she knew very well, but couldn't, not yet. As if doing this now, after what she had done just a few hours ago, would be an even worse betrayal. I'm very tired, honey, she told him. No problem, baby. Love you. Jack stroked her stomach, touched her neck with his lips, and went to bed. It all started when Sandy slipped in a convenience store. All she needed was two liters of milk. She was just making potatoes and scallops when it ran out. She could have just put them in the oven, and they would have been fine. But she wanted them to be perfect. Sandy always wanted everything to be perfect for Jack. She usually went into town to the big store, but it was miles away and the little corner store was only a few blocks away. She parked, walked into the store, grabbed the milk, and was starting to walk up to the counter when her feet slipped out from under her. There was a refrigerator in which ice cream was stored, and the drain from it was clogged. Water flowed across the floor, almost invisible against the background of the white tiles. When she came to, several people gathered around her. Sandy had absolutely no idea what had happened. Her head was pounding with pain. Are you okay? Someone asked. I am fine. She sat up, then her head started spinning, and she fell back. Once again, Sandy woke up in the ambulance. A young man was looking down at her as he attached wires and other objects to her upper body. The other man pressed his fingers against her side, as if groping for something. In shock, she realized that she was stripped to the waist, with unknown men with her, but they quickly finished and covered her with a blanket. The rest was a blur. It seemed like there were too many people in the hospital room. She felt a tug and realized that the nurse was cutting off the remnants of her clothes. She was grateful when the woman quickly pulled the sheet over her. A young man dressed all in white came in and inserted a catheter into her. She knew it and was embarrassed, but she felt dizzy and there was nothing she could do about it. She tried to move, to bend, but her right leg would not obey. Please try not to move, someone said. The man quickly left, replaced by an elderly female nurse who looked at her and said something that she could not understand. My head, it hurts so much, she complained. An older man in a white coat said something to another nurse, and moments later she felt a prick in her arm. The last thing she remembered was the flashing of faces as she was rolled down a long corridor. When she woke up again, Jack was next to her. 
There was a worried expression on his face. He held her hand and now she knew everything would be okay. Four days passed before Sandy was allowed to go home. For the first day or two, she saw one unfamiliar face after another. Then everything became quiet for a long time. Luckily, a female nurse came and removed the catheter. She didn't like it as it felt like she had just wet herself. A CT scan showed a small blood vessel in her head was bleeding, but it quickly went away on its own. She also had a broken rib, which hurt like hell, and a sprained ligament in her back. For some reason, she couldn't walk without a crutch. Her right leg couldn't support her weight. When she slipped and fell, her right leg gave way under her and something happened. Her right thigh was so swollen that she could not fasten her pants. Jack was upset that she was hurt and went to talk to the store employees, but they refused to discuss anything and referred him to their insurance agent. The little store did everything it could to try to make it seem like Sandy was to blame for her carelessness. This was a mistake. Then another insurance agent came to the house. He told them that since Sandy was just a housewife, she had no income, so there were no financial problems, only medical ones. Sign here, the man said, handing her a stack of papers. Jack stood up and showed the man the door, calmly telling him that they would contact him. Furious, Jack hired a lawyer for her. The man was known to be violent, and he quickly obtained a copy of the store's surveillance footage, which clearly showed what had happened. All medical bills were paid first by their own policy, but how an overnight stay in the emergency room a three-day hospital stay and one ambulance ride could cost nearly $50,000 was surprising. Neither Sandy nor Jack had any experience in these types of cases. But the lawyer certainly did. The lawyer insisted that Sandy undergo physical therapy because her back and hip were in terrible pain, and she still had difficulty walking. The older woman at the clinic was named Kathleen. She was gentle and made her do exercises to strengthen her muscles. She also did some hip and back rubs, which actually seemed to help. Over the years, Sandy gained some weight, but a side effect of the therapy was that her body quickly lost weight. The fact that the food seemed to have no taste quickly contributed to weight loss. The small store's insurance company finally agreed to cover the therapy because it was clear they were responsible, although they now claimed Sandy was half to blame for being careless. The only one who noticed any real changes was Jack. There were some things Sandy simply didn't remember, like the first time she got into a small Kia with a manual transmission and then tried to drive it as if it were an automatic. She drove it all the way to the store and back in low gear, plus stopped the engine with the brakes when she stopped. There's something wrong with the car, she told Jack, and he went out and checked. Everything was fine and he asked her to show him what was wrong. He sat in the passenger seat and watched her struggle with it. Jack carefully explained how the car worked, even though she had been driving it for over a year. After this incident, he began to pay more attention to her. One day he needed a checkbook. He looked at the numbers and they seemed strange to him. The total amount was almost $1,000 short. He sat down at the table, folded the checks, and restored the balance. For some reason, Sandy just couldn't add up the numbers correctly. There were other things, too like too much salt in the mashed potatoes she made, which was a small thing in itself, but not at all like her. After talking with the lawyer, Jack sent Sandy to a specialist, who found nothing wrong, but Jack realized that something was wrong. Blood outside the human brain is toxic. There's a lot we don't know, the doctor told him. What do we do? Jack asked the doctor. Let's wait. Sometimes these things correct themselves the man told him. After a few months, many of the little strange things she did disappeared, and she seemed normal again. Jack didn't mind that, having lost almost 20 kilograms in six months, she looked like the girl he had married, and not the soft 33-year-old woman she had become before the accident. Jack even took care of himself and worked on his light tummy with some success. It took almost a year before Sandy's hip got much better. The settlement was quite large, and the amount was unexpected for both of them. The insurance company tried one last stupid trick. They still claimed Sandy was 50% at fault due to negligence. 
When Sandy fell, her hand hit the floor and became very swollen, so she had to have her wedding ring cut off at the hospital. The repair cost only a hundred dollars, and the insurance company sent a check for fifty dollars, hoping, of course, that they will cash it out, not understanding the consequences. The lawyer was having a party, and the company failed when they realized that the jury would see what they were trying to do. I'm really going to miss Kathleen rubbing my back and thighs, Sandy told Jack one evening. Hey, there's no reason why you can't go and do it, baby. The insurance company won't cover it anymore, but damn, we can afford it, he told her. Maybe I'll do that, she replied, without really thinking about it. About a month later, she called her therapist to see if she could get a massage. Kathleen gave her the phone number for a local massage therapy studio and spa, since she worked primarily with accident victims for the doctor, and her sessions were very expensive. It's usually about $50 an hour instead of $250 for a doctor's visit, Sandy, Kathleen said. Sandy called and made an appointment at the spa. The woman was very nice, and she felt great. She started going there once a week. It was so pleasant that she even invited Jack to go himself, but he did not agree. How can I stand having some cute young thing rub my bare ass? He teased her. Oh, it's not like that. It's just a massage, she giggled at his teasing. They massage your ass, don't they? He asked, reaching out to pat her ass. Yes, but it's all women, she said. Maybe I should come and look at it. Jack grinned. Pervert, she laughed. This started it all. Sandy loved the light teasing and the way Jack sweetly made love to her afterwards. For several months it was like this. She did her weekly shopping, then took a shower and went to the spa. One of the girls worked on it. Some were better than others, but all were good. One hot, sunny day she showed up for her appointment looking forward to a quick bath, followed by a massage. Today two of our regular masseuses are not working, but there is a new one, if you don't mind the administrator told her. Of course, it will be good. Why not try someone new, she thought. She was shown into a back room, undressed and soaked in the huge hot tub for a few minutes. Then she quickly took a shower, pulled on the soft, fluffy white robe that was provided for her, and went into the small room. The woman said Randall would be there in a few minutes. Sandy barely had time to put her purse on the floor when this thought flashed through her head. Randall? Man? She turned to the door to tell the receptionist that she had better cancel the appointment when there was a knock and the door opened. Standing there was one of the most handsome men she had ever seen in her life. He was wearing fairly long shorts and a white tank top, and his arms were very muscular. He had dark, wavy hair, rugged features, and was about her age. He wasn't very tall or even large, but he looked like he'd stepped straight out of a magazine photo. Hello, I'm Randy and you're Sandy? God, we won't have any trouble remembering each other's names, right? He gave her a disarming smile. I, I don't think, I've never, Sandy stuttered, feeling herself blush. You don't have any prejudices because I'm a man, do you? He grinned again. He looked so relaxed and at ease. I, well, no, of course not she answered, pulling her robe tighter around her. Fine. Come on, undress to a level that is comfortable for you. Here's a sheet to cover you up. I'll be back in a few minutes. He left, and she stood there, not knowing what to do. He is a professional, and this is just a massage, she thought to herself. Sandy quickly pulled on her bra and big white panties and lay down on the table, as she had done many times before, pulling the sheet securely over herself. Usually with female therapists, she would undress completely, but this is a man. She really wanted to just go home, but she was embarrassed to say anything for fear of seeming stupid. The receptionist acted like everything was fine, so maybe it was. Randy barely managed to keep a straight face when he saw this client. The robe did not hide the fact that she had beautiful breasts. Finally, some hot stuff. He was tired of old women and fat men. After a dozen such clients, he was ready to give up everything and return to freelancing. But he needed money. He immediately picked up on her doubts about having a man working on her and went into his most charming manner to relax her. Basic shyness was key. She found it difficult to say no. 
While working at the spa, he received four to six clients each day, but in his home office, two was considered a good day. Sometimes there were several days in a row when they didn't call him at all. When working on a voluntary basis, one homosexual after another became a real problem. It brought in a few extra bucks, and he didn't mind jerking off to them, but he preferred women, especially housewives. He had already knocked a couple of them onto his back in the past. Some of them were very easy, but some he had to tinker with. Of course, he could easily pick up a girl in a bar if he wanted, but seducing an old lady from some idiot was much more interesting. When he worked in his home office, which was just a spare bedroom, women almost never called him, except for a few older married women who wanted to be fucked. But even these were few, so he decided to try the spa. The bad part of the spa was that it needed to be very careful. The owners would not tolerate any disturbances. Yeah. Finally, a chick. He thought this one might be fun. If he builds up the pace long and slowly, it will only be a matter of time. Randy had patience. The massage session went well and Randy was completely respectful. Sandy kept waiting for him to say something, do something, maybe try to peek, but he didn't. She was sure he hadn't even glanced at her underwear, except maybe her bra straps. His hands came to its edge, but never touched it. He also found a spot on her right thigh, so he carefully pulled the cover back, gently folding it down to the edge of the waistband of her underwear. This part was wonderful, starting with mild pain and ending with relaxation. She noticed that he was much stronger in his work, stopping right on the edge of pain with every movement of his wrist. This session was amazing. Randall was as good at his job as any of the women at the spa, and she really liked the former pressure. However, he was a very handsome man, and that made her a little uncomfortable. So she went back to having a woman work with her next time. At that reception, she caught a glimpse of him, talking to an elderly lady in the lobby with whom he had apparently just finished. Hi, Sandy. He looked at her and smiled. She smiled back and then entered the room with the hot tub and sauna. That evening, Sandy told Jack that the spa had a male therapist. She thought about it a lot. It was all completely innocent, and she actually liked the intense pressure. She, of course, did not want to hide anything from Jack, although she was sure that he would not be upset. Oh, really? I hope he's cute, baby? Jack teased her. Yes, probably. A couple of weeks ago, I received one session from him because the girls were on sick leave, but I returned to having the girls deal with me. Is it true? Why only once? Didn't you like his work? Jack rustled the newspaper, not paying much attention to it. I think the difference is that men are stronger, I guess. She drawled, waiting for his reaction. Yes, probably. All these guys are usually gay, so it shouldn't matter. Plus, they are professionals, so it's no different than visiting your doctor. I still didn't take off my bra and panties, plus the sheet, of course. It's a shame, isn't it? Jack laughed. I guess I was stupid, she said. Yes, probably. Jack reached for the TV remote control. Would you mind if I asked Randall again? Sandy asked. Of course not, it's just a massage. If it makes you feel better, that's good, he replied. Sandy immediately decided that since Jack was clearly not worried, then she had no reason to worry. The next week, Sandy asked if Randall was available and blushed slightly when the secretary grinned. Of course it's free. Do you want me to send it? Sandy nodded and then went to the large jacuzzi to soak in it. She was again in a soft white robe when there was a knock on the door. She quickly pulled on her bra and panties and then pulled her robe tightly around herself. Hello, Sandy. Glad to see you again. You know the procedure? I'll be back in a few minutes. The man had the same casual manner, the same confident and disarming grin. Sandy started to undress. She had just unclasped her bra out of habit when she thought about it. Then she decided why not and took off her bra, but left her panties on. This session was the same as the first. He didn't mention the lack of underwear, although he knew as he stroked her bare back through the sheet. Is it okay if I bare your back? This will make the job much easier, he asked quietly. 
Yes, everything is fine, she replied. This was much better because he didn't have to work with her clasp. He held the sheet quite high and partially slid his arms under it, even using the edges of his palms to tuck the bottom in to cover the outer edges of her breasts. Then he took out a hot towel from somewhere and threw it over her shoulders. The feeling was so amazing that she almost fell asleep. Sandy wasn't too bothered by the fact that she was almost naked, lying on the upholstered table. He couldn't see anything anyway. When she turned over, he first lowered the sheet into place, then covered her bust with a towel and pulled the sheet out from under it. Everything was exactly the same as the first time, only now she was fully aware that her breasts were naked under the sheet. When he ran the sheet over her chest, pulling it out from under the thin towel, they tensed, and she realized that the bumps they had made on the towel were becoming visible. But he didn't do anything that could be construed as anything other than a massage, keeping his hands carefully outside the towel. Only after a few sessions with him, the situation changed slightly. By that time, she was comfortable enough with him, and she completely undressed, deciding that this way he could better work on her thighs. Randy pulled the sheet down to expose her back so he could apply the lotion. It was much better, and now he could work on the outer edges of her buttocks and thighs without getting oil on her underwear. He always stood on one side and pulled the sheet towards him before working on the opposite thigh, then moved it away before moving to the other side. Then came the next small change. She had just turned over on her back. Randy lowered the sheet over her body and reached for his small towel that covered her bust, and then calmly asked her, Aren't you ashamed of your breasts? No, not really, but I... Sandy said, not knowing what to answer. Women would sometimes work on her there, and it was nice, but... Randy was a man? She wasn't really all that shy, but other than her husband, some doctors and a friend she let touch her a little at prom years ago, no man had even seen them, let alone approach it them. Touch. Well, working there can be very rewarding, but I can tell you're a little shy about it. So let's leave it for today, okay? I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. You'll just let me know if you decide you're happy with that part. Sandy didn't answer, so Randy draped the towel over her upper body again and pulled the sheet out from under it. He carefully ended the session. She felt wonderful again. The stiffness she still felt in her hip was gone again, and she knew it would last for a few days. Randall became Sandy's regular therapist, and she really enjoyed his work. Throughout the sessions, he remained completely professional, without giving away anything, so she felt that over time she became more and more comfortable with his touch. Sandy began to think that he was not the same orientation as Jack had suggested, so there was no reason to worry about anything sensual. It even occurred to her to ask him about it, but she couldn't find the words and didn't want to offend him. One night after dinner, she asked Jack what he thought about letting a therapist work on her bust. You said women do that, didn't you? He asked her. Yes, sometimes, but I wanted to make sure you wouldn't get upset. Why should I be upset? He's gay, isn't he? So what's the problem? Even if that's not the case, he's a professional and this is his job. So if it doesn't bother you, go ahead. Yes, I think so. I guess I'm just stupid, she replied. Has he ever said or done anything? Asked Jack. No, all he talks about is muscles and how to keep my body healthy. It drives me crazy, Jack shrugged. Today you can treat my bust if you don't mind, she blurted out during the next session, after he made her turn over. She mentally said the words at least a dozen different ways, but everything she could think of sounded stupid, so she finally just said them. These were exactly the words Randy had been waiting for. He tossed the sentence out carefully and then let things take their course. Fine. Do you feel pain or any tenderness in this area? He asked, controlling the sudden excitement in his voice. No, not really. Just where the straps of my... my bra are rubbing against me. You can try a different design. This is a big problem for women like you with heavier breasts. This can lead to various kinds of problems with the spine and lower back pain. He even offered her several brands, explaining the benefits of each type. Sandy almost giggled. A cute man who knows about bras is funny. Randy picked up the small towel he usually used and moved it to the side. 
Even expecting this, it was still a slight shock to her. Sandy's large breasts were exposed and she saw Randy glance at them and then turn to get his lotion. Coconut. It makes the skin soft and pleasant. It's a little more slippery than almond butter, which is what I mostly use, he said. For a moment, Sandy felt like she wanted to cover herself again, but he began to work quietly, and soon she relaxed. She looked at him through narrowed eyes for a few moments, but as far as she could tell, he might as well have been rubbing her feet. He made several circles on each of her soft breasts. Her large breasts always moved slightly in different directions, and Randy used both hands to gently press each one inward, his fingertips stroking the outer muscles on each side. It was so pleasant that she closed her eyes and resigned herself. Randy took a quick glance at Sandy's large, soft areolas. They were almost five centimeters in diameter. It was impossible not to notice how they tensed slightly. He wanted to lean down and touch them with his lips, but he restrained himself. Everything has its time, he thought. He knew very well that if at any moment he moved too fast, everything would stop. He finished quickly, a little too quickly for Sandy as the sensation was really good, and covered her again with another modest towel. The towel was soft, he warmed it up and it was just wonderful. This time, as he gently probed her stomach clockwise, his fingers went lower than usual. Sandy was already feeling a slight tingle from the delicious effort on her rather sensitive bare breasts, and a brief touch below the waist made her feel slightly moist. Her breathing faltered a couple of times before she managed to get it under control, but Randy still didn't react. I think you were right. Randall seems to be homosexual, she told her husband that evening. Why do you say that? asked Jack. Well, girls usually bust me out, so after I asked you about it, I told Randall it was okay. He did so, but showed no reaction at all. Yeah, he's either blue as a $3 bill or dead if he didn't like those breasts. Jack grinned, moved sideways on the couch, and grabbed her. You're such a pervert, getting excited by some homosexual touching me. She giggled. Actually, the thought that one of the women might do this also excites me. He chuckled. Sandy knew full well that Jack had a not-so-secret fantasy of watching two women together. Of course, it wasn't something she had ever considered, but it was fun to tease about it. She also knew very well that just a few comments on this topic were enough for Jack to take action. God, you really are a pervert, aren't you? She giggled again, and then Jack began to caress her, and her mind went into a swoon. It was a fun time. Jack made love to her a couple of times a week, but usually only in bed. This time they started on the couch and ended on the carpet, giggling and having fun. Later, when she was in the shower, Jack climbed in with her and they soaped each other up before rinsing off. They dried each other off and got into bed. She also slept, wrapped in his arms, feeling so safe and warm that she slept more soundly than she had in a long time. Maybe I should let gay men touch my breasts more often if I give you the reaction I did last night, she teased Jack at breakfast. She also let her dressing gown fall open so he could look at her. She still felt sexy, but it was time for Jack to go to work. Jack just laughed. It's probably more interesting to let women tease you than some cutesy guy, he said again with a wide grin. Sandy didn't answer. She didn't see the point in mentioning that while Randy might be gay, he was still a very nice man. There was no harm in not mentioning that, even as a homosexual, there was something about the way he touched her that made her think about sex with her husband. She always loved being with him. These moments were the high point, and lately they had become more frequent. Sandy even began walking around the house in her bra less, noticing that his gaze returned to her whenever she moved. Now that her body was back to the shape it was in when she was barely 20 years old, Sandy felt more feminine and alive than before. Sandy looked forward to her weekly sessions with Randy. Now he pulled back the sheet and rubbed her bottom, feeling the folds of her round ass and the back of her leg with his fingertips. The first couple of times he did this, she tensed. But his fingers went no further, and she relaxed. These moments were delightful small jolts of excitement running through her. She felt a little guilty for allowing herself to do this, but it felt so good. Randy pulled the sheet up with one hand and tucked it over the edge with the other, 
exposing her buttocks in turn. Everything was moderately obscene, but at the same time, innocent. As she lay on her back, he sat on the edge of the table, carefully placed the sheet between her legs, and then stroked her inner thighs while holding her knee. She felt the outer edge of her leg rest against his for support. The first time he did this, she felt very naked, but he carefully pulled the sheet into place, draping it around her buttocks so it wouldn't slide off. The first couple of times he also stopped almost halfway to her thighs. She knew that as he adjusted the sheet, he probably glanced briefly at her legs, but it was impossible to avoid it. It didn't matter since he wasn't even looking, so after a few sessions, she got used to it. She had lost basic modesty because he never did anything out of the ordinary. When he stroked her thigh higher, Sandy did not protest. Then, when the edge of his palm lightly touched the sheet covering her loins, she said nothing. Some of his actions went a little further than she expected, especially the part where he stroked the inside of her legs in long, delicious strokes, but she found that she enjoyed the sensation. I can feel your body becoming more flexible, he said, stretching her leg upward, causing her to take a deep breath and then exhale. He did it gently and slowly, his hands turning so that he could use his fingertips to make small, soft circles quite high on her hips. It was actually very intimate, but she allowed it because by now she was sure that Randy was just trying to please her body. The sensation was so sensual that Sandy felt that she was very close to the peak of pleasure. Several times, when the edge of his palm barely touched her groin through the fabric, she thought it was an accident. Now he also allowed his hands to briefly move to her areolas after massaging her breasts, causing a flash of sensation each time. Sandy often watched Randy. When he worked, he always had such a cautious manner. If he ever showed any reaction, she knew she would have stopped him right there. Now she loves these days. By the time she returned home, she was ready for Jack to make love to her. In this regard, everything was very good. Having fully recovered from the accident, her life was now ideal. When Randy one day handed her a regular-sized bath towel to cover herself with, she didn't think anything of it. Usually he left the room while she was undressing, but this time he mentioned that he wanted to go study some more, and she became interested in it. As he spoke, she undid the buttons on her blouse and took it off, then unclasped her bra and threw it off without even thinking about it. For a moment she realized what she had done and now stood half naked in the room with him, but he did not show that he noticed. Then he said that he would be right back and left, so she undressed completely and lay down on the table, throwing a bath towel over her back. Being almost naked in front of him didn't mean anything. Everything was natural now. That day, he also mentioned that he would no longer work at the spa, but planned to return to college to further his education. Sandy was unhappy about this until he made a proposal that he would have a home office and would see a few clients there a couple of afternoons each week. I understand if you want to keep coming here, that's fine. But since you're one of my favorite clients, I just thought, would you mind coming there? He asked her. I think it's possible, she answered. Randy smiled and then went about his normal work. Success. Now he knew that it was processed and ready. He had to get Sandy out of this stupid spa setting. They were a bunch of conservatives and there was no way in hell he was going to get away with it in this place. All it takes is a drop into her glass of water and it will strip her of any remaining inhibitions. When she just started taking her clothes off while he stood there talking to her like it was normal, it was amazing. Women had done this to him before, but they usually did it in a teasing manner. Sandy did everything as if it were the most natural thing in the world. This little bitch was really tough. He knew he had excited her several times. He could feel it. It drove him crazy, and he needed everything he knew to maintain his doctor's tact. She was very difficult to get close to. He thought that she had probably only had one man in her entire life, and that thought made it all the more fun. Yes, getting this woman required a little help. He had already used the white powder stored in a drawer in his apartment several times. The first time the girl turned into a zombie, so the second time he used much less powder, and within minutes the woman was his. He didn't dare try anything like that at the spa, 
but once he got her into his apartment, she would be his. He could hardly wait, having spent months trying to get a piece of this woman's ass. Up to this point, he was almost ready to give up on her, until she seemed to have reached her condition. If he does it right, she'll still think it was her idea. Two weeks later, Sandy was walking up the steps to Randy's second-floor apartment. He led her into what he called his home office, which was simply a second bedroom with a massage table. He handed her a small towel, explaining that he didn't have his own sheets yet. I used to use rental services, but they need to rent 12 sets a week, and I won't have that many clients here, he told her. Maybe I can sew some for you if you'd like. She smiled, unbuttoning her blouse. That would be great, he replied. She noticed that on his desk was the bottom sheet from a full-size bed, folded to fit. Strangely, the table was much lower than in the spa. It will be easy to do. She looked at the table as she unclasped her bra and set it aside. The bottom sheet should have stretch corners, Randy told her, pausing slightly to see if she would continue to undress. She pulled off her trousers and hung them on the chair. Turning around, she saw him still standing there with a towel in his hand. Sandy took the towel, not thinking much about it since Randy had seen her almost naked many times. It was quite small, but she decided it would be enough. Then she hesitated. He was still standing there. I'll be right back, he said, leaving. Sandy left her white underwear on, as she always did when she had her period. He even placed a small jug of water and a glass nearby for her. She took it and took a sip. The water was nice and cold. Randy walked in. A few minutes after he started, she saw him reach for a glass of water. He poured out the water, then filled a glass from the jug and handed it to her. It seemed a little strange, but she took a few sips. Randy noticed that she didn't take off her underwear, and of course, he knew why. He was just unlucky. Nature intervened, but he can always do it next time. But still, he poured out the glass of water he had mixed and then filled it with fresh water from the jug. The session went fine, except that lying on her back made her feel a little more naked than usual as he sat and moved her knee to the side for long strokes along her inner thigh. The towel he gave her was just a fairly large washcloth. He never touched her groin or even came close to it. He never did that when she was having these days. Sandy paid and went home, feeling great as always. That evening, I told Jack that Randall was going back to college to get more education and had moved into a home office, but he wasn't bothered. As long as you feel comfortable and his work helps you, everything is fine, Jack told her. During the next session, Randy worked on her breasts longer than usual. He had already gone so far as to caress her breasts with both hands. Sandy liked this part. This time, he even gently rolled the very tips of her breasts with his fingers sending jolts of pleasure through her body. But he quickly stopped before she could say anything. Sandy knew that this was probably too much, but she felt so good that she remained silent. He offered her a drink of water. She sat down and drank a couple of sips. It was nice of him. For a moment, she felt discomfort as she did not have a sheet to press against her upper body, but he was busy with his oils and did not even look in her direction. You need more than just a sip, Sandy. It's important that you stay hydrated, Randy said. She knocked over the glass and drank almost all of it, then lay back down. Randy probably just wanted to please her, and he undoubtedly succeeded. On the days when he worked on her, she felt amazingly excited. She felt a delicious but guilty pleasure from it, and took it out almost endlessly on her husband at home. Confidence. She trusted Randy. He now knew her body almost as well as her own husband. She lay back down, feeling hot and flushed. When he stood at the head of the table and cupped her face, stroking her eyelids, she felt so pleasant and warm that she almost dozed off. Then his fingers began to play with her earlobes, which always caused a sensual sensation when Jack did it. Randy had never touched her earlobes before. It was the place that always turned her on. Jack, of course, knew this, which is why he did it. But no, wait. Randy? For a few seconds, she felt slightly confused, as if she didn't know where she was. Now she wondered why Randy was doing this, but she couldn't bring herself to say anything. She still felt like she wanted to doze off, so she blinked her eyes quickly and took a deep breath. Randy saw the dose of powder begin to take effect. It was time. 
Then his fingers moved down her neck to her shoulders and then lower. Her thoughts turned to her husband, Jack. She felt so good. It would be wonderful to touch him, to feel his body next to mine. As if in a dream, Sandy felt hands pressing on her stomach, making circular movements, his hands going lower and lower. Then there came a moment when the edge of his hand moved the towel aside and actually touched her. She knew this because the sensation was completely different than when he touched her through the sheet. In this foggy world between sleep and wakefulness, she again felt a light touch. The towel no longer covered her. She opened her eyes. Randy was looking at her. His expression was different. Stop that! The words formed in her head, but not a sound came out. Sandy's legs spread as fingers probed her. She didn't think about it, they just did it. For a moment, she wondered what was happening to her. Suddenly, she wanted these touches. Her hips lifted to meet his hand. And then Randy began to touch her harder as her body responded. Something was very wrong. She had never felt like this. Almost continuous small spasms. She knew she had to get up. She had to stop this. This is madness. Wrong. Oh, escaped from her lips. Although she struggled to say something, Randy then stood up, one hand still touching her in a much more intimate manner than before. Randy placed one hand on each knee, sliding them down. She watched him do this, unable to do anything. She knew she should push him away when she felt it, but she couldn't help it. He is not homosexual. She unconsciously thought at that very moment, and then everything around her turned into a continuous blur of pleasure. For a second or two, she tried to force herself to stand up. But then it all started again, and it was impossible to stop. n ah uh, came out of her lips. She put her hands on his shoulders, trying to push him away, but she couldn't. Instead, she dug her nails into him, which only seemed to spur him on. When she once again had pleasure, everything around went dark. The next thing Sandy felt was a cool sensation, as Randy used a damp towel to dry her off. She looked at him. He was naked. Wow, that was something, he told her, drying himself with the same wet towel. He raised his hand and weepied his shoulders, finding traces of blood on his fingertips. Sandy stared at him. She quickly became alert. Oh my God. She sat up and reached for a towel to cover herself, but there was none. She was naked. Are you okay? Randy asked. He seemed surprised by her reaction. No, we can't. We shouldn't. I'm married. She swung her feet off the table and reached for her clothes. She still felt a little unsteady. What's the matter? From the way you acted, I thought this was what you wanted, he said. No, I didn't want to, but not this. What should I do? She screamed. She got into her clothes and grabbed her purse, running out the door. The last time she saw Randy, he was standing there naked with a smirk on his face. As Sandy started the little Kia, she glanced at her wristwatch. Was it 10 minutes to 5? How can this be? Her meeting was scheduled for 14 hours, where did almost 3 hours? That evening, when Jack tried to hug her, Sandy brushed him off, telling him she wasn't in the mood. A few days later, Jack asked point-blank if she would ever be in the mood again. That night, Sandy fulfilled her duty as a woman, but no matter how hard she tried, she could not get pleasure. Eventually, after an internal struggle to get her body to respond, she feigned to please him. The next few teams ended the same way. Jack, of course, knew about this and was unhappy, but did not say anything so as not to upset her. For some reason, he couldn't pinpoint. He knew something was bothering her. He hoped she didn't relapse. How was your session today? Jack asked over dinner about three weeks later. He didn't mention massages and didn't know that Sandy didn't go to any of them. She opened her mouth to say that everything was fine as before, but instead she said that she didn't go. Aboot, why? He asked. I just... I wasn't in the mood, I guess. Is it true? I thought they were helping you, Jack said. They helped, but... I'm probably better now. Sandy saw Jack looking straight at her with a curious expression on his face. She couldn't hold his gaze and lowered her eyes. Jack pushed his plate away and looked at her more closely. Okay, tell me what happened, he demanded. 
Nothing, she answered. Damn it, something definitely happened. Stop pestering me, leave me alone. Sandy jumped up and ran into the beard room, closing the door. So what the hell now? Thought Jack. Is she having these days? This can't be true. She had them a week before. Changes in life, hormones. She's only 34, maybe, but hardly. He had no idea, but he knew his wife well enough to leave her alone until she was ready. He thought to himself that maybe she should go see that specialist, that primary doctor, again. Finally, after a long time, he stood up and went to the door, only to find it locked. This was a surprise. Uh, expensive? Why is the door locked? He asked, receiving no answer. The thought crossed his mind to simply knock down the door, but in her fragile state of mind, that would only make the situation worse. As he listened, he heard her quietly crying. For the first time in their entire married life, Jack slept on the sofa that night. The next morning she was up and cooking breakfast, acting almost normal. He waited for her to say something, to explain, but she didn't. He leaned in to kiss her before leaving for work. She grabbed him and held him, as if trying to stop him from leaving. Finally, she let him go. Jack looked at her and did not understand anything, but knew that something was definitely wrong with her. I'll call the doctor today, he told her. She just nodded. That morning, Sandy went to trim her rose bushes, her mind full of worry. She needed something to keep her hands busy. She didn't know what to do or what to tell Jack. And while all this was swirling around in her heed, she was careless and cut her finger on one of the sharp thorns. She was sucking blood from her finger when old Henry approached it. Hello, Sandy. What's wrong with you? Did you cut yourself? Let me see. She held out her hand. The cut was tiny, but it was bleeding profusely. I'll be right back, Henry told her, and a few minutes later, he returned with a tube of ointment and a bandage. In a couple of minutes, he repaired the minor damage. Can I... Can I talk to you? Sandy asked. Certainly. Come, we can sit on my porch. Henry noticed the worry on her face. Seventy years of life had taught him a lot, and he could easily understand that Sandy was upset. He brought two cups of coffee and sat at the table while Sandy stuttered through the whole story. I see, he told her softly when she finally fell silent. Was there a reason? Was there something missing in your life, or was it just anxiety? Henry asked. No, I never even thought about doing this. I do not know what happened. I didn't want this, but I couldn't stop him. So, he forced you, raped you? Henry asked. No. It was as if I had no way of not letting him, she cried. Are you saying that you felt drowsy and then lost control? Did this person drug you, maybe give you something? No. I don't know how he... Sandy remembered Randy giving her water to drink. This was before she usually drank water after. What's the matter? Henry asked. Water. He gave me a glass of water. Usually I'd just take a sip, but then he said it was important to stay hydrated. Henry's face darkened. There's no way to prove this now. I guess if you tell Jack it'll sound like an excuse, Henry muttered. What should I do? I just can't tell Jack, she groaned. That's why you almost ran me over the other day, isn't it? He asked. Yes. Well, I know one thing about relationships. Once you start keeping secrets from each other, it doesn't take long before you start fighting, Henry told her. We're already quarreling, a little bit. I can't tell you what to do, but if it were me, I'd just lay it all out on the table, tell the truth, and take the blows that come my way. Jack will leave me. I know him. I can't live without him. I just don't know what to do. She burst into tears again. Maybe he'll quit, maybe he won't. But if you continue in the same spirit, it won't get better. But in another case, you may have a chance. Your husband is a damn strong man, and he loves you, you know. Yes, I know. I love him too, and I don't want to hurt him, Sandy said. You already did it, darling. He just doesn't know about it yet. Henry patted her hand. Sandy went home soon after. She sat quietly in her chair and thought, the last words spoken by old man Henry stuck in her head. You've already done it, honey. He just doesn't know about it yet. Finally, she entered the house, 
took out her suitcase and packed her clothes. Then she got into her Kia and drove to the bank, withdrawing $250. She left the rest. She returned home and sat down to wait. Jack walked through the garage door. Sandy wasn't in the kitchen. He found her sitting in a chair in the living room, her hands folded in her lap. She was clearly crying. He immediately noticed a suitcase standing on the floor next to her chair. What's happened? He asked her. Please sit down, Jack. Sandy told him. Jack sat down. I want you not to say a word until I'm done, and then you can do whatever you want to me, okay? Jack nodded. Sandy started from the beginning, explaining how she felt after the accident. Then she went on to a long story about how, over the course of many months, one thing follows another, how she relaxed, as if some things had become normal. Jack's expression changed from surprise to anger, but he remained silent until she finished. How could you do this? Did you actually let this guy make love to you? Jack said quietly through clenched teeth after Sandy fell silent. Yes, it happened. I do not know why. I don't know how it happened, but for some reason I couldn't stop it. Jack, forgive me. Nothing like this will ever happen again. She burst into sobs. So I'm not good enough for you, huh? Jack stood up with a stone face. Oh God, no, it's not like that. I love you more than anything in the world, Sandy cried. Doesn't that idiot know you're married? He knows, Sandy said categorically. I think I need to go see this guy. Jack just stood and calmly looked at her. Sandy was surprised. His reaction was not at all what she expected. She thought he would just kick her out. But he seemed to be calm. Maybe everything will be fine in the end, she thought, and began to get up. Can you forgive me, honey? Please? She asked. So, where are you going to go? Jack asked, his face expressionless. I don't know, Sandy answered. Defeated, she sat back down. There was no convincing Jack when he made his decision, and she knew it very well. Well, good luck to you, Jack told her. She looked at him for several long seconds. Then he turned and walked away. Sandy's world came crashing down, and she grabbed her suitcase and walked out the door. There was nothing more to say. Her life was ruined. It was all over. She lost her man. Almost two months passed when Randall's phone rang. Yes, I work with men too, Randy said when the male voice on the phone asked about it. He made an appointment for the afternoon, glad to have another client. Business was slow, and his rent was due soon. After lunch, he answered the knock, glad that his client was not a fat man or an old cow. He's a big guy, but at least he's in shape and looks clean. Hello, I'm Randall. Come in. He held the door open as a large man entered and looked around. Showing him the massage room, he explained how to prepare. You can be completely naked if you want. I am very liberal in my work. Randall grinned at the man and then left the room. The man was some kind of cold dude. He didn't change his facial expression. Ready? The man answered when he knocked a few minutes later. Randall opened the door and felt instantly drawn into the room. The big man was fully dressed. He turned and locked the door. It was a shock. What's happening? I don't have money, Randy asked fearfully. Do you remember Sandy? Know her? She is my wife. Randall's eyes lit up in surprise. He looked around for some way to escape, but the big man was standing in front of the door and there was no other way out. Hey, buddy, it's not my fault. She pestered me herself, he whined. No, I didn't, Jack told him, just before he hit him. There wasn't much of a fight after that, just a beating. Randy came to his senses. The big man was still there, crouched next to him. He tried to crawl back, away from him, but the wall got in the way. You woke up, right? The man hit Randy between the legs with a huge fist. Randy screamed. Then, his voice turned into painful moans, and the man remained on his knees, looking at him. Finally, he said quietly, Now you will tell me the truth. There's no way in hell my wife would let me have sex with someone else, you piece of shit. You drugged her, didn't you? Speak or die right here today. Choose. The man's voice was level, but hard. Randy knew he was completely serious. 
Yes, sorry, please do not kill me, Randy cried. The big man looked at him silently, nodded. His face had no expression. Where is it? In the top drawer, Randy told him without hesitation. He was terrified. His body was shaking. He was almost sure that this man intended to kill him. Don't move, motherfucker, the man said, standing up. Jack walked over and opened the box. He took out a bag of white powder, opened it, and poured it into the toilet. Then he went back out and squatted down again. Just so you know, asshole, your next client who walks through the door might be someone I know, okay? Some of my friends are not nearly as nice and polite as I am. An evil grin crossed his face. Perhaps it would be better if you choose another city, maybe further than a week's drive away. And the next time you even think about another man's woman, remember this. The big man grinned and then punched him one last time. When Randy came to, the big man was still standing at the door. His face still had no expression. He looked at the pile of rubble that was the massage table. You have an hour, after which I'll be back. And go ahead, call the police if you want, I don't care. But if you do this, they will eventually let me go, and next time I will use my rifle, and you will not know when it will fire. The man walked out the door, leaving it open. Randy struggled to his feet, panting. He gathered his clothes, stuffing them into his suitcase. Then he couldn't lift it. His ribs hurt so much that he knew they must be broken. He felt the blood running down his leg in a trickle. Reaching to his face, he felt that his nose was three times larger than usual, and one eye could barely open. He opened his suitcase, grabbed his jeans and underwear, then struggled to his van and threw them into the trunk. Returning inside, he looked at his watch. Thirty minutes had passed. He knew he had to get out of there. The man said he would return. Randy managed to walk down the steps to his old van. He started the engine, put it in gear, and drove away. He didn't notice the huge pickup truck following him into the city limits, where it pulled off the road while the man behind the wheel watched the old van disappear from sight. After Jack's call, Sandy spent several hours getting herself in perfect shape. She was so excited that she was shaking. She lived in a tiny motel for two months, crying until there were no more tears. She left her room only to eat, and even then rarely. When she called Jack and asked if she could borrow some money when she ran out, he simply told her to go to the bank and get as much as she needed. It was the only time she called, even though every fiber of her being wanted it. A surprise awaited her at the bank. Her name was still on the account. Sandy immediately realized that Jack must still trust her. She withdrew the $500 she needed and kept the rest. This gave her some hope, but she still waited every evening for his call. He called only once, two days after she moved. He scheduled her for a blood test. He told her where and when to go, and she obeyed without hesitation. The phone never rang again. Until this time. Mine are clean, and so are yours, Sandy. Lucky, I guess, under the circumstances, Jack told her. When he asked if she wanted to go do something with him, she replied that, of course, she did. Over the next few hours, she put on and took off all her outfits, washed herself several times, and spent an hour applying makeup. Looking at herself naked in the mirror, she realized that she had become thin. Even her breasts had shrunk. Finally, she settled on her blue dress, which she had not worn for many years. She didn't put on a bra. It was still hanging on her. I want you to do only what I tell you, understand? Jack told her. She had never known him to be like this, to speak to her in a tone she had never heard from him. Yes, I'll do it, she answered meekly. Jack looked very good when he arrived, but she immediately noticed his hands. The backs of both were bandaged. What's happened? she asked. Fell, he told her. Sandy realized that this was not so, but did not ask anything more. She was surprised when Jack stopped in front of the spa she usually went to. He parked the car, walked over, and took her hand, leading her inside. Sandy wanted to ask questions, but instead she just did what he asked. The two women came out and led her away. She looked back at Jack, and he was smirking. In the room, two women undressed her and bathed her, then handed her a warm white robe and told her to wait. 
A moment later, one of them returned with a large bowl of hot, soapy water and a safety razor. Jack walked in, and she saw his hair was damp and he was wearing one of the spa's white robes. She realized that he was taking a bath in another sauna. He made her lie down, then removed her robe. She looked up at him and saw that he was looking at her naked body, as he often did before. What are you doing? She asked him. I'm going to shave you, and when it grows back, you'll be mine again. Sandy burst into tears. Sorry, Jack. I don't know what happened. I'll never... Shut up, Jack told her firmly, pushing her onto her back. Taking a bowl of soapy water, he lathered her up, then took a razor and gave her a thorough shave. Sandy lay there and looked at him in surprise. For some reason, this simple act was the most erotic thing she had ever done to herself. Here, he said when he finished. It occurred to him that maybe he should have thought about this sooner. She actually was impressive. It took all his willpower not to reach out to her. Sandy expected him to make love to her, but instead he put her robe back on and walked to the door. He opened it and said something, and two women entered the room. Sandy knew both of them and had worked with her in the past. They had portable tables, and as soon as they were set up next to each other at a distance of a couple of meters from each other, they left the room. Jack took Sandy's robe, laid her face down on the table, then covered her with the sheet. He quickly took off his own robe and sat on another table, pulling the sheet over himself. With wide smiles, both women entered and got to work. Sandy lay there all this time and looked at Jack, and he looked back. The two women only worked for about 30 minutes, then the woman working on Jack chuckled softly. I think it's time, she said to the other woman. She, working on Sandy, looked at her and smiled. Jack was already lying on his back and the results of their touches were very clearly visible. Lucky girl, it's almost enough to make me want to break some rules, the older woman whispered to the other as they quietly left the room. It's a pity that all this was hidden the younger woman whispered in response. They both giggled as the door closed. Jack sat up, facing Sandy. She sat down facing him. I want you to come home to me, Sandy, he told her quietly. Tears streamed down Sandy's face and she hurriedly stood up from the table and hugged him. More than three hours had passed when they finally got dressed and went out into the hall. I know I said two hours. How much do I owe you for the extra time? Jack asked the women sitting in the hall. Nothing, not a penny. Do any of you want to repeat the appointment? The eldest of them said with a grin. Of course, why not? She could use some work, he laughed. Welcome back, Sandy. The other one smiled at her. They walked out holding hands to Jack's truck. He opened the door for her and kissed her. Perhaps I don't understand something, Sandy asked. Well, you can still get massages, but only from women, okay? Okay. Everything will be fine, and just so you know. I had a long talk with old Henry. He saw me sitting on the porch and came up to me, saying that we needed to talk for a long time. Jack smiled. He said I looked like someone died. Then he said that you had already talked to him. He also mentioned that it looked like you were under the influence of drugs, so I went to find out. Jack raised his hands, showing bandages. He gave me a glass of water. Maybe, Sandy began. This is true. I made this idiot confess when I suggested he leave town. But you were also careless. This will not happen again. What about Henry? This is quite a wise old man. Sandy nodded. From now on, everything will be different. I know that in some ways you are not to blame, but in others, you are to blame. But I myself should have been more attentive, said Jack. He reached out and wrapped his arm around her shoulders, holding her tightly to him. It's hard to tell the truth about some things, isn't it? Asked Jack. Yes, this is true. This will never happen again. I will always tell you everything. Sandy nodded. I am sure about that. And now, go home. Looks like I need to feed you, Jack said. Old Henry peered out from behind the curtain at the two children sitting in their driveway. They kissed like a couple of teenagers. He chuckled to himself as he closed the curtains. Sitting down in a chair, he picked up a photograph of Millie, his late wife. If there is love, then people are able to overcome almost anything. Sometimes just a little push is enough. 
He noticed Jack sitting on the porch, walked up to him, and just stuck his nose in. You want this woman, don't you, Jack? Henry asked after their long conversation. Jack just nodded. Well, then get up off your lazy ass and go fix the situation. Sandy belongs to you. All you have to do is go and get her, Henry told him. Apparently, Jack did just that. He remembered his own frustrations about 40 years ago. The only one who came and talked to him was Millie's grandfather. Kissing the photo, he placed it back on the table next to his chair. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one.